I cannot believe that we have to talk about the trade that just happened. Sean Murphy of the A's. I'm not wearing that stupid hat anymore. I want to wear a hat for a team that knows how to build a successful winning franchise. There we go. Oh, oh wrong P. Sorry. There we go. There we go. But all jokes aside, we're going to go ahead and break the trade down in just a moment. And before we do that, I just have to say, if you're an A's fan, I am so sorry. He was special. So here is the full trade in a nutshell, and give me a second, we're going to break it down because before we talk about the A's trading Sean Murphy, we have to talk about a former A who was traded to the Mets last year. He got a bunch of money, Chris Bassett. He gets $21 million a year for the next three years. Now, if you're a Blue Jays fan, you should be pretty excited. I'm not saying Chris Bassett is going to be your ace because Alec Manoa exists. Kevin Gosman, in my opinion, is still better than Chris Bassett. But Chris, he's going to be 34 years old by the time that 2023 comes around. Last season, he had 167 strikeouts and 181 innings. So an 8.3 strikeouts per nine, that's not the best. But still, 181 innings, I really feel like Chris Bassett can be someone that can throw 175 plus innings over the course of that three-year contract. So the Blue Jays, that rotation, again, it's going to be Manoa, Gosman, Bassett. That's a really good three-headed monster, or if you want to call it a monster. But as a Blue Jays fan, you still have to be honest with yourself. You have Jose Barrios and Yusei Kikuchi because, unfortunately, Jin Ryu, he's going to be missing the majority of 2023 with Tommy John surgery. So Barrios and Kikuchi, if they don't bounce back, you're going to have to rely on Ross Stripling as your four or five starter or some of your young prospects like Nate Pearson and some other guy like Thiedman or something. Here's the guy I was talking about, lefty Ricky Tiedman. He could be the fifth starter going into 2023, but the ETA for him is 2024, so it's not likely. So if you're a fan of any of the teams in the AL East, whether you're a Yankees fan, an Orioles fan, a Red Sox fan, are you a little bit more afraid of the Blue Jays? Do you think that they can contend even more so in 2023 and now that they have a legitimate one, two, three rotation? Now, of course, there's other better one, two, threes in baseball, but Manoa, Gosman, and Chris Bassett in a playoff series? That's pretty good. Also, I'm going to go ahead and show this graphic right here of the 2021 A's. I mean, not that they were a super team, but they could have been a serious playoff contender going into 2023. But the A's, I mean, to me, this all but confirms that they're probably done in Oakland. They are spitting directly in the faces of their fans. They have to move. Otherwise, it's an abomination. And again, I feel terrible for Oakland A's fans. They don't deserve this. And when I say they don't deserve this, all right, so Sean Murphy, we know, is a top five catcher in baseball. And if you don't agree with that, you don't know baseball, turn in your baseball card, whatever. You don't know ball. But Sean Murphy is going from the A's to the Atlanta Braves. So the Braves, obviously, they have three catchers at this point. William Contreras, you have Travis Darno and Sean Murphy, but we'll talk about William because he was traded to the Brewers. But before we talk about William, I mean, Sean Murphy had a three and a half war in 2022. He had a 330 on base percentage and a 120 OPS plus, which aren't numbers that scream at you, but he had 18 home runs and 37 doubles as a catcher. One of the most productive offensive catchers in all of baseball. And if we take a look at his baseball savant, he is top four. 14% in framing. He is top 4% in pop time. That is catching the ball and throwing it to second base or third base to try and catch a runner stealing. I mean, Sean Murphy, if you don't consider him the cream of the crop, the best catcher in baseball, in my opinion, I think the best catchers are... You have JT Romuto, Ali Rutschman, Will Smith, and Sean Murphy. Like, he's definitely a top five catcher. And again, if you don't agree with me, you don't know ball. So the A's traded a top five catcher. I mean, a few weeks ago, a lot of people were saying that Cleveland was going to be in the running, but Cleveland would have to give up a top five prospect, Daniel Espino, George Valera. And I said, no, the A's are stupid. They might trade him for three M&Ms. And honestly, I feel like three M&Ms would have been better than the guys that they got. So let's go ahead and talk about what the A's got kind of piece for peace and starting with the major leaguers, Manny Pena. Now he does have a career 90 OPS plus, which is actually pretty good for a catcher, but he's 35 years old. I I mean, I guess it's probably a one-year deal. Yeah, he's a free agent in 2024. So Manny Pena is going to be the backup catcher for Shea Langoliers. I don't understand that whatsoever. They're also getting Kyle Muller, who is a six foot seven starting pitcher or a relief pitcher at the very least. Uh, in 49 big league innings, uh, he has a 5.14 ERA, a 4.05 FIP, and a nine strikeouts per nine. So Kyle Muller also going to the Oakland A's. Now this kid probably has the highest ceiling of anyone that we've talked about so far. Again, 
Asturi Ruiz is going from the A's, and if you don't remember or if this name sounds familiar, he came from the Padres when the Padres acquired Josh Hader, so he was kind of the big name in that trade, and now he is going to the A's. The A's absolutely love utility guys with a lot of speed. I mean, if we take a look at his 2022 campaign, Asturi Ruiz, this kid had 85 stolen bases in 114 games. He had a 447 on base percentage and a 973 OPS. So if Sturry Ruiz actually pans out, the A's are going to get a fantastic player. But the metrics, how hard he hits the baseball, a lot of people are saying he's not hitting the ball to gaps and, you know, hitting a bunch of home runs. His hard hit percentage is not the best in the minors. But because his speed is so prolific, he was getting on base at a high clip. And in the majors, that's not going to happen as often with the better defenders and guys who have better arms. The Oakland A's are also getting Freddie Tarnak, who in 2022 had 124 strikeouts and 106 innings. He had a 4.05 ERA, and so far for his career in the minors, he has a 4.05 ERA. And then last but not least, kind of the Esturi Ruiz of pitchers. So Roiber Salinas, I hope I got that right. This dude had 175 strikeouts and 109 innings to go along with a 3.55 ERA. He is a starting pitcher, so if they can get the most out of this guy who is a strikeout machine, and if they can get the most out of Esturi Ruiz, this could be a small W of a trade in the next few years if Oakland actually develops these guys well. But the thing about Oakland, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep on to these guys because they don't have any money. And if they do have money, they don't spend it. Like they are the most embarrassing franchise in sports, in my opinion. The Oakland A's, they take the crown and it's not even close. And to be honest, I don't think they're going to be in Oakland over the next few years. Like th again, they are smacking their fans in the face. And if you're an A's fan, I would not blame you if you showed up at zero games next year. Like this is bad. So let me go ahead and break that down one more time. The A's gave away Sean Murphy to the Braves. Now, they did get a couple of these players from the Brewers, so bear with me. The A's are getting Kyle Muller, Esturi Ruiz. If I could compare him to any big leaguer, it's probably Billy Hamilton or even a guy like D. Strange Gordon, Freddie Tarnak, Roiber Salinas, and Manny Pena. Now, the Brewers, the Brewers have to be doing backflips right now because they... They might have won this trade. The Brewers somehow managed to snag William Contreras, a 24-year-old. I don't know if I should call him a catcher because his pop time is terrible. His framing is not the best, but he could be a very good DH for the Brewers. I will say, though, it's going to be interesting for the Contreras parents. So we know that William and Wilson are brothers, and now they're in the same division. The Cardinals and the Brewers... Who do you cheer for? But William Contreras absolutely smacks baseballs. We know that he is one of my favorite players to watch. His swing is so pretty. The Brewers are also getting Joel or Joel pa Payampas. I'm sorry. This is the first time I've heard about some of these players. So if I botch their names, again, I'm very sorry. A year ago, he had a 3.23 ERA and 41 strikeouts in 55 innings. So he is very much a pitch to contact guy. And then the final player that we have to talk about, a youngster, Justin Yeager or Yeager. He had 81 strikeouts in 52 innings last year and a 3.1 ERA. He didn't start a single game. So he is going to be a Guy that comes out the pen, he is going to be a strikeout machine, and that that's the trade right there. It's, it's not good for the A's. I'm sorry. Again, if you're looking at the positives, and if you're looking at this trade with the glass half full, you are expecting Esturi Ruiz to be a healthy Billy Hamilton who actually is good at hitting baseballs, and then you're also expecting this Roiber Salinas to be the next Edwin Diaz if he turns into a bullpen guy or if he's a starting pitcher, someone like... I don't have any comps. I have no idea who this is. At this point, I'm just making stuff up and I should not be doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and just say there's the trade right there. If you're an A's fan, I am very sorry. If you're a Brewers fan, you basically won this trade, in my opinion. You got William Contreras essentially for free. And if you're an Atlanta fan, you get Sean Murphy, one of the best catchers in baseball. As a Cleveland fan, I am really bummed that he is not going to be in our lineup because that guy straight up rakes and his defense is is very good. So if you're a fan of any of these teams involved, let me know if you think you got robbed, if you think you won the trade, if you think that you kind of broke even, let me know because... um. Again, one more time. I'm sorry, Oakland fans. This is embarrassing. It's downright pathetic.